In the last two videos, we looked at writing and reading applications. In this video, we'll look at chatting applications. In addition to the general purpose chatbots like ChatGPT, Bard, and Bing Chat, many companies are looking at whether they can build specialized chat applications. If you're involved in a company where you have many people interacting with customers or having certain types of conversations of similar nature, this may be a case where you can consider whether or not a specialized chatbot can help with those types of conversations. Let's take a look. Earlier, we already saw the example of a customer service chatbot that might be able to take orders for a cheeseburger. Another example of a specialized chatbot would be one that specializes in helping you to plan trips. So how can I vacation in Paris inexpensively? And a bot could be built to have specialized knowledge about travel. And today, there are companies exploring a wide range of advice bots. For example, can a bot give you career coaching advice or give advice on cooking a meal? So a large variety of specialized bots that are really good at answering questions about one thing are being developed by different companies today. Some of these bots are capable of just having a conversation and giving advice. Some of these bots can also interface with the rest of a company's software system and take actions, such as to put in an order for a cheeseburger to be delivered. Another example of a bot that might be able to take action would be a customer service chatbot, where it turns out that many IT departments get tons of password reset requests. And if a bot can take care of that, then it may take some of the workload off your IT department and a bot like this that needs to be able to send a text message to verify identity and actually help reset the password. This is a bot that would need to be empowered to actually take action in the world, such as to get a text message to be sent to someone. Next week, we'll discuss more how chatbots like these are built that don't just generate text, but can actually take action. Because of the number of customer service organizations exploring the use of chatbots, I want to share with you a range of the spectrum of common design points being used by different businesses. And for this slide, I want to focus on text-based chat rather than voice or phone-based chat. So at one end of the spectrum would be a customer service center with only humans. So you would have human service agents typing back and forth messages like, welcome to Better Burgers and let me place the order for you. At the opposite end of the spectrum would be chatbots only where you just have software responding directly to customers. But between these two ends of the spectrum of humans typing at the keyboard or chatbots only, there are a couple of common design points. One of the common design points would be to have bots support humans, in which a bot will generate a suggested message for a human, but the human service agent will read over the message and either approve it if it looks good or have a chance to edit the message before it is actually sent back to the customer. This type of design is often also called human in the loop because there's a human that's looped in and is part of the process before the message actually gets sent back to your customer. And this is a way to mitigate the risk of the chatbot maybe saying the wrong thing because a human can check over it before it's actually sent back to your customer. In the next video, when we talk about what LMs can and cannot do, we'll go over some of the mistakes that LMs can sometimes make. And so this design helps protect against those mistakes of LMs. A little bit further on the automation spectrum would be if you have a bot to triage messages for humans. So maybe the bot answer the easy messages, but escalate to a human for the things that isn't quite ready to handle yet. Sometime back, I actually led a team that built a bot that would automatically detect if the customer was asking for a refund request. It turns out that was about 10% of our total chat call volume. And by just detecting that and automatically giving the customer instructions, this routed 10% or so of the traffic away from the human agents. And so this saved the agents a lot of time and let the humans focus on servicing the harder requests. But this type of triaging is another common design to help your human service agents save time and have to focus only on the harder cases that they're more uniquely qualified to handle. In many customer service centers, a single human may be simultaneously having chat conversations with four or eight, or in some extreme cases, maybe even 16 customers at the same time. And with bots supporting the humans, it becomes easier for a human to manage a larger number of 
parallel conversations. Given that bots sometimes say the wrong thing, I want to share with you what building and deploying a bot often feels like in companies that want to do this in a safe way. Often, companies will start with an internal facing chatbot. So many times I would build a chatbot, but let only my own team use it um, to say, answer the questions about travel or whatever the bot is supposed to do. And assuming your internal team will be more sympathetic and more understanding of mistakes and be more forgiving if the bot says something wrong at one time, this gives you some time to assess the behavior of the bot and also avoid public mistakes that could be embarrassing for the company. After this looks safe enough, a common next step would be to deploy with human in the loop, to let the human check over many of the messages, if feasible, before it actually goes out to the customer. And after doing this for a while, if it looks like the bot's messages are generally safe to send to customers, then you might allow the bot to communicate directly with customers. Of course, the details of every business differs, and for some applications, it may not be practical to have humans check over every message because of the sheer volume of traffic. But depending on the risk of the bot saying the wrong thing, as well as the volume of traffic and thus whether or not human in the loop is feasible, these are some of the design patterns I've seen companies use to try to deploy bots safely. To summarize, we've seen how LMs can be used for writing, reading, and chatting. These three categories are not meant to be an exhaustive list of what OMs can do, but they're just a few broad categories of what you might be able to use them for. And OMs can do a lot, but they can't do everything. In the next video, let's take a look at what OMs can and cannot do and better understand their limitations. Let's go on to the next video.